Hello everyone, Mike with Spray Jones and I'm recording a video on uh, spraying to building wraps because we get a lot of questions on this subject pertaining to the post frame structures that are going up all across North America. If you take a look at a metal building a post frame structure is designed to be inexpensive to build because it does not have exterior sheathing. It does not have 3 8 or 7 16 plywood or OSB. Normally the building is a structure for vehicle or animal storage. It's not meant to be insulated and so keeping the insulation from getting wet and having bugs is not a consideration because it's not going to be insulated. So when they are insulated we have an issue. We have an issue about dealing with moisture that's going to get past the metal siding. This is always going to happen. So I've talked to a few people that have had post frame structures. They've got the horizontal slats, they're getting the metal put up and then they're thinking do I or don't I put up a building wrap. Okay, let's take a look at two scenarios. If you're going to be using open cell half pound foam insulation I really believe that a building wrap is an absolute must because that product is not meant to be getting wet. So if you're going to have a post frame structure and you're using half pound insulation, get a DuPont Tyvek or a vapor diffusion open membrane or some type of intermediary uh, system that's going to be around your structure from the outside that the spray foam will adhere to. Now the most important thing with these structures and the wraps is to make sure that the wrap is on tight and that it's a type of wrap that the foam will adhere to. We'll discuss a little bit more on adhesion later on in this video. But the first thing is to get all the wrinkles out to pull it taut like a drum head to staple it in place to do it very very well and then to put your uh, metal on so that the metal and the screws and the fasteners that are holding the metal on into the wood timbers and into the purlins will restrain, physically hold and sandwich that building wrap. And what will happen is if moisture gets and when moisture gets past your metal siding it's going to happen at some point. It's just a fact of life. At least it has the membrane to touch before it comes in direct contact with open cell foam. Open cell foam should not get wet and stay repeatedly wet. So if you're in a climate, if you're in the Carolinas or you're in uh, uh, the upper northeast if you're getting in or northwest and you're getting into wet circumstances I really believe you either switch out to a closed cell foam or you've got to have a building wrap because direct to metal means that any moisture getting past can get into the open cell foam. Now the open cell foam can dry out. It's not going to grab the moisture and hold it indefinitely. As soon as the moisture is removed and you return back to arid conditions, uh, it will wick back through and eventually be gone. But that means you need to get arid and stay arid. So why take the risk? Wrap the building with a, with a, a proper membrane and then put the foam insulation in. Now when it comes, comes to closed cell, we don't have an issue with moisture, internal or external. We can get open our closed cell foam to be completely soaking wet and it's not a problem. So a Tyvek wrap or some type of vapor diffusion membrane open is fine. All we're trying to do is create a substrate on the building that the foam is not in absolute direct contact with the metal. Now is this critical? Does this need to absolutely happen? No it does not. Not on the walls. You can spray closed cell foam direct to the walls of a post frame structure and it's fine. Yes it makes it more difficult to remove the metal but you have bonded intimate contact with your outside structure. Now consider this if you have hail damage or wind damage or a vehicle hits the building and you need to replace a bunch of the panels you're going to be wrecking the panels to get it off the foam anyhow. 
and more than likely you're going to be on an insurance claim at that point. So what do you really care if it's a little bit harder and the foam needs to be touched up and a few extra steps need to be taken? I always think that direct to metal is always the best option because it reduces and eliminates any possibilities for shifting, something didn't get sealed properly, there's just no chance for there to be moisture of any kind sitting between the wrap and the foam because the foam is bonded to the metal. However, if you do want to do a wrap, we've done numerous buildings with wraps and it, it still is, in my opinion, an acceptable way to go for a couple of reasons. Foam will stick to Tyvek. It absolutely will. It'll stick to most of the membranes on the market today that are being used for uh, transition control, like Monty Baker Blue Skin, for instance. And most membranes, if they are a little bit slick, they can be primed. Uh, I just insist that they be tight and that they be well restrained so that there's no shifting. If the foam hits them and then they want to buckle and shift and take the foam with it, it creates a huge nightmare for installation. It's not for rookies to get involved with. But you will not find most suppliers giving you any um, data on closed cell foam tested and rated over top of a product like Tyvek and here's the reason why it's very difficult to run an adhesion pull check on it because the material itself is very thin and the force that it's going to take to pull the plug free is usually going to rip the membrane it's not like spraying to 3 8 plywood or OSB or brick or metal or anything like that where the where the substrate is strong in and of itself so that's the first issue is that the substrate can tear so they can't run a proper test on it. The second is a lot of times the cutter, the plug cutter that you're going to push into the foam to cut your plug to do your pull test on can also cut the membrane because the membrane's thin and you're not going to know when you when you hit the substrate you're not hitting a piece of plywood you're hitting a piece of uh, tin or something with the membrane attached to it. So you can cut straight through. And I mean, if you don't have a solid backer, you could, in essence, push the plug cutter right through the foam and right through to the other side and cut a hole in your wall. So you can cut the membrane and have it very, very difficult to test its adhesion, the spray foam's adhesion, to the membrane in the first place. So these are the, the, the top two reasons, really, why the suppliers don't rate and don't advocate that their products can go to a Tyvek. We have used Tyvek in construction a lot. We don't like it. We try to have people avoid it. We like uh, things to be solid, cardboard or plywood or metal. Uh, Tyvek, I find the biggest problem with it is if it's not restrained, it's going to shift and twist and pull through the staples and pull through the screws. So the people installing it have to pull it tight. They have to weld fasten it so it's not going to break free and tear. Will it stick to the actual material? Absolutely. Will it stick well enough to work? Absolutely. Now let's talk about roofs a little bit. I do not like membranes on roofs of metal buildings at all. And the reason being is that we need and have to have tight intimate contact of the spray foam to the underside of the roof deck so that uh, there aren't issues with voids. If you have a void on the roof deck, that's an area where rain water and leaks can collect they can then form uh, a little puddle and the puddle can start to rot out the structure or form moisture problems so no membranes down uh, between the metal and the interior side when doing the roof uh, obviously case by case basis if somebody had a high quality membrane installed it was very tight it maybe was very well adhered even to the metal itself maybe it was adhesive backed uh, and somebody could prove and demonstrate that it wasn't going to move and pull, then I'd be interested in taking a look at whether or not the spray foam can be installed to it. But in most case, cases and situations, the foam is going to be direct to metal for the roof. So, yes, you can put your membranes up. Now, when in doubt, run a check. Spray some foam out, do a test patch, do a pull test on it. Uh, check and see how your adhesion is behaving and if you think that you're going to have any issues a lot of times you can get a simple speed primer a primer that is rated for plastics 
uh, from your local industrial paint and coating supply store. They're going to have something for painting automotive bumpers or plastic trim on a building or something like that. Something that's going to etch into the material and allow it to get better adhesion. I had um, a situation one time where a large wall was done on a commercial building with me membranes. Uh, Monty Baker uh, Blue Skin. Uh, the Blue Skin has a very slick polyethylene uh, outer layer to it. Uh, it, this was uh, a wall and an overhang and the overhang part the spray foam did not want to stay tacked up we actually were having quite a bit of trouble with it uh, wanting this bond so we stopped immediately and then we switched and we got a primer and I think for like 1200 bucks we were able to come in with a speed primer uh, on the Baker blue skin and that was all that we needed to etch that polyethylene surface and then we continued on with the same spec same pace of installing the foam and our adhesion problems were gone. So I just don't think we can fear monger and say that you absolutely can't install the membranes. You just have to do it with a, a game plan. You need to know what you're looking for. You're looking for the membrane to be well adhered, well restrained, no cupping, no fish mouthing, pulled tight. You need to do a test patch, check that your open cell or your closed cell foam is adhering extremely well to it. If it's not adhering, you can try with a primer and then avoid membranes unless they're extremely well adhered for your roof. That way you don't have the foam contracting and pulling a loose membrane and creating a quarter inch or even as bad as half inch little pockets up on the roof deck. You want the, you want the spray foam on the inside of your commercial building or your, your pole shop to be in direct contact with your metal. Uh, that way you've got everything well bonded, no voids, well adhered, well sealed, and you can have a lifetime product. So. I know there's no data to really review on this. It's just a simple uh, opinion of what we've seen in the field and how to deal with it in the field and answer some questions that we most commonly get asked. And uh, I've, I've had good success with it, uh, and I would continue to do it, but with the caveats that I've given you uh, so far in this 12-minute video. So thanks for subscribing, checking it out, sharing it with people that need information. Stick around for more videos. We've got more information coming out all this summer. Bye.